Hello, I'll be presenting for you a Trap Shooters Primer for Beginners and Intermediate Shooters. This project was created as part of George Mason University's Systems Engineering and Operations Research Capstone Project by a group of students. Uh, it was originally documented as a Trap Shooting Decision Support System, Optimum Ballistic and Energy Clay Target Interception. It was presented at the Proceedings of the IEEE Systems Engineering Symposium at the University of Virginia. Some context into basic things about trap shooting. Trap shooting has been a shooting sport since the 19th century when real birds were used, but as the sport gained in popularity, the birds were replaced by clay targets. And in 1952, trap shooting was adopted as an international sport into the Summer Olympics. The game is built around five shooting positions arranged in a semicircular arc around the trap house. From this trap house, the discs are launched from 40 to 60 miles per hour, travel about a distance of 50 yards before they come in contact from the ground. Shooting is done from each of the five positions in rotation from distances of 16 yards being the closest you can be to the trap house to the maximum handicap of being 28 yards away from the trap house. The challenge in the game is to shoot this very small, very fast moving clay target with a shotgun blast in order to break it. The problem with shotguns and the benefit of shotguns is that you have a bunch of pellets that spread out as they travel. As, they, as it travels more, the shot becomes more and more spread, giving you a wider radius of possible zones for you to kill the target. However, once it reaches a certain range, your kill zone starts to shrink as the pellets become so sparse out that there are holes in your target and your pattern that the target can slip through. So the problem is, is that there's no tool out there that provides a usable model for evaluating what shotgun ammo and choke to use in trap shooting that will give you the biggest radius with the most probability of breaking your clay. And so we need an alternative method of instruction that approaches the problem from an analytical perspective. Most of the trap shooters out there will pretty much just tell you what to, to use, what they use, because they're pretty good. So it's kind of, you know, very hard to determine what exactly to use when trap shooting. So we need to explain the physical mechanics behind successful shooting in order to produce our decision-making tool for comparing equipment. We started off with some research into shotguns and found that most of the literature out there pertains to hunting where you're trying to get a lot of energy into a large target far away. But trap shooting, you're trying to get just enough energy into a small target at a close range. So most of the literature out there isn't very useful when you're trying to compare equipment. So we want to determine what gauge you should use, a 20 or a 12, what choke you should use, improved cylinder modified or improved modified, what ammo load you should use, 7 eighths, 1 or 1 and 1 eighths ounce, what ammo pellet size we should use, number 8 or never 7.5, and, and what combination of all these components will give us the best tool to use with the largest single shot probability of kill with the largest radius for trap shooting. So we designed 12 test case, 11 test cases for comparing all these different attributes. When you look at the comparisons on the right hand side to the test cases on the left hand side, you can get isolated comparisons for each of the things that we're trying to uh, compare. So if you're trying to compare gauges, you would use test case one and three, as this has every single component the same except for the gauge. When we put these into, uh, when we patterned all these comparisons, we found some interesting results. So this is a comparison of the three different chokes on a browning with one ounce of seven and a half. On the left you have the patterns at 20 yards and on the right you have the pattern at 37 yards. Now what this graph is showing you is the number of pellets in a four square inch area as you move in distance from the center of the shot. So along the bottom of the graph you are moving in inches from the center of the shot to the outer edge of your shot radius and along the Y you have the number of pellets in your four inch square. The improved modified is the tightest choke and you can see that you get a lot of pellets in the center of your shot but it dissipates very very quickly as you don't have very many pellets at the edge of your shot, whereas the improved cylinders are but more sparse in that you have fewer pellets in the center, but you have more pellets on the outside of your radius. So when comparing a 20 gauge versus a 12 gauge, we have a 12 gauge shotgun on the left and a 20 gauge shotgun at the right with all other components the same. You can see that there are more total pellets in the 12 gauge than in the 20 gauge. We predict that this is because you have lots of interbarrel interactions with the smaller 20 gauge barrel where the pellets are becoming flattened and misshapen by hitting themselves in the barrel, causing them to fly off of target and be useless when it comes to breaking a clay. To determine the pellet's energy to compare to its spread, we needed to find out what the drag force was on these pellets. We did some research and found an article published in the Journal of Fluid Mechanics on the aerodynamics drag of cannonballs. So, what this graph shows is the result of that research. 
you have Reynolds number on the bottom versus Mach number of the, of the solid black lines of increasing Mach number. For trap shooting, we're interested in spheres of diameters of 2.39 millimeters and 2.26 millimeters. We highlighted this region in red on this graph and we're able to use the data within it to create a table of breakpoints for linearly interpolating what the coefficient of drag is as a function of both Reynolds and Mach number. Now we've been saying Reynolds and Mach number. Reynolds number and Mach number are dimensionless coefficients that determine the drag. So Mach number is used to find the compression drag and Reynolds number as the uh, viscous drag. So we created a simulation model that was able to produce coefficient of drags for different diameter spheres as a function of its velocity and diameter using Reynolds and Mach numbers. This gave us a curve that shows the velocity of a number eight shot pellet as it travels down range. On the x-axis of the bottom, we have the range that the pellet has traveled in feet, and on the y-axis, it's velocity in feet per second. By the time you reach the interception range of about 30 yards, you can see that we've lost almost half of our velocity. This is the same for with higher muzzle velocity. So your downrange velocity is a very weak function of your muzzle velocity, so you don't gain a whole lot by increasing your muzzle velocity. This is what we get from the larger shots. You know, the larger shot load means a higher muzzle velocity. It also means more recoil. It means a more sore shoulder, and you're not really benefiting too much from it. We found that the kinetic energy needed to break a clay target was about 0.2 foot-pounds per four square inch area to uh, be the energy density needed to get a 100% probability of kill. When we compared this kill energy to the different shot sizes, we're able to get this graph that shows how far a pellet has traveled versus the number of pellets you need to break your disc. The blue graph shows number nine shot, the red one number eight, and the green one number seven and a half. On the bottom you have how far the pellet has traveled in yards and then an uh, increasing number of pellets it takes to break. So this will give you a good idea of what size of pellet to use based on how far away your disc is going to be when you hit it. We then compare this to our spread data that we found and the determined that a 12 gauge is the best gauge to use for trap shooting. We found that modified and improved modified chokes are good. Um, the top graph shows a modified choke and the bottom an improved modified. With a modified you get a quicker spread but it tapers off sooner and then with an improved modified it doesn't quite spread out as fast but it gives you much more range. We also determined that the best thing to pair with your choke is about one ounce of seven and a half shot. Our recommendations, again summarized, is to use a 12-gauge shotgun with a modified or an improved modified choke and one ounce of 7.5 pellets at 1,200 feet per second muzzle velocity. This combination provides a lot of energy because you're using the larger pellets and it's spreading out quickly but not too quickly as you saw with an improved cylinder. It gives you a maximum range of about 27 yard, of 70 yards, which is the farthest that you'll be able to hit a clay from, and it gives you a good pattern. If you want more information on the rest of the guns that we tested, go to this website where you'll be able to find the full documentation of the entire report as well as all the rest of the test cases that we simulated using our model. Thank you and I hope you learned something.